Hello, this is Sandra Hart at Life Over 60. You know, it really is true. The Venus and Mars theory. Women are truly Venus and men are extraordinarily Mars. <music> This is Sandra Hart again. Thank you to all of my subscribers. And if you are new, I surely wish that you would join my community here. Subscribe and follow all of us on our journey. Well, I woke up this morning and I have another video that I was going to put up on Tuesday uh, today. <laughs> but I was really thinking. I was lying in bed and thinking that I'm going to be having a birthday in a couple of months, you know, I'm not getting any younger. And I was thinking about my life and relationships and about my family, my grandsons and my daughters and grandchildren. You know, all of that was kind of rolling through my head this morning as I was lying there. And you know, recently I've been immersed in doing a study. I've been doing a study in the different is the way women think and the way men think about relationships, about things that make them happy and about what attracts them in that relationship. And I've been interviewing teenagers and I've been interviewing people and in, in men in their 30s and men in their 50s and 80s. I didn't interview Arthur because I probably, I should maybe, but I didn't interview him for this, for this survey. But I was really thinking, you know, we women think so differently, especially in relationships about men. I don't know about you, but most women, and I know the way I feel, I'm, I'm you know, you're initially attracted to somebody. You know, if you can remember back when you were dating and you had boyfriends and then when your husband came along and whether you were instantly attracted to him or not, you know, I wasn't. Uh, I was very instantly attracted to my late husband. Uh, but Arthur, I was not instantly attracted to him. His white hair and he had white hair from a long time ago. And um, I just, you know, I thought he looked too old. <laughs> but once I went out with him and I got to know him, you know, I became very attracted to him. So I think women do not put too much value on surface attraction. I think we could go out with a fat, bald-headed guy if he was really kind to us and warm. In other words, we look for inner worth and, and, and we look beyond the surface beauty of a person. Women look deeper. You know, of course, we have to be attracted to someone. But what makes us attracted to someone is what's inside of this man. His habits, his how he treats us, how he feels about life. There's a certain chemistry that goes on within us that is attracted to something beyond the physical facade. Isn't that true? But in my interviews and in my study, I really began to realize that most men are, are you know, with their, they're thinking with their testosterone. As they get older, it changes a little bit. But guys really don't think like we do in relationships. So I want to share with you today what I found out. I interviewed teenagers, teenage boys, and I asked them to give me five things that they like in a girl. And then when they meet a girl and they want her to be his, their girlfriends, just exactly what qualities do they have to have 
And most of them kind of said the same thing. So I'm going to tell you the five things that these young boys thought. Of course, the first thing, what would you think? A pretty face. They like someone who looks pretty. And then they wanted somebody who was trendy. Someone who kind of looked like the rest of the girls and had the latest trends that was really important to them because they didn't want to be stuck with somebody that was not trendy. And um, they liked a girl who had like kind of good personality and the ability to flirt. And um, the fourth one is that they wanted her to smell good. <laughs> yeah, smell good. They wanted her, I guess, you know, to, to be fresh and, and maybe have a nice little perfume on. And the last one, is that they really wanted someone who likes to hang with them and who likes to do the same things that they like to do. In other words, if he's interested in football, she has to really have a great interest in, interest in football. If he is interested in rock music, she has to want to go with him to all, all the concerts and, and be interested in that. So this is what it goes through a teenage boy's head. You know, they are attracted right away because of their testosterone to a pretty girl. And that really was important to them. Which really was no surprise, because I can remember way back when all the girls that were popular were all the pretty girls, you know. And so, you know, which wasn't me. <laughs> anyway, all right, the second one. I went back to someone in their 30s. So I interviewed a few men in their 30s. And still, the number one is the same. They had to be physically attracted to the woman. So these men in their 30s are still thinking with their testosterone. Um, one thing that they uh, did have that was different is they really liked a good listener. Someone that really seemed to be interested in what you were saying and they weren't taking up the conversation and it wasn't all about her but they would listen to what he had to say. And then someone that, when thinking of a mate, someone maybe that he would like to marry, it's someone who really was supportive of his goals and his dreams. No matter what it was that he wanted to do in his life, that this woman would be so supportive of what he was going to doing and what his life plans for the rest, plans for the rest of his life would be. And um, someone who was a little bit independent. A girl who really had her own dreams so that she kind of could be independent and have her own life. So I found that kind of interesting and I could kind of tell that where young women and young men, as they are planning on either living together, getting married, whatever type of relationship they have. They kind of wanted their own independence, but yet he wanted her to also be interested in his. So it, it was someone, a woman who was independent, but yet still has an interest in his dreams and would be supportive of his dreams. And another thing, that would make all of this true is that compatibility really was important. They had to have uh, common interests, common ideas about maybe getting married, raising a family, common interest as to going forward in their lives. So all of those five things, when the men that I interviewed in their 30s, these were the five common things. Now they all had some different answers, but when I put them all together, these five things came out to be the most in common that they wanted. Okay, now let's go to someone in their 50s. Now, men in their 50s, um, have ch they change a little bit because they really weren't thinking about uh, being wildly attracted to the woman on first call. What they enjoyed and what they thought was really important is someone who has a good sense of style. She knows how to put herself together so that when he would take her out, you know, he would be very proud of her. Someone that had a, an excellent sense of humor. Sense of humor scored very high on the list of um, 
things that men in their 50s liked from women. They liked someone who had a very uplifting personality. In other words, someone who doesn't complain all the time and wasn't always whining about her life, her first husband or whatever, but someone who kind of was joyful and uplifting and was pleasant to be around. Um, someone that had a lot of confidence in herself. Uh, and that confidence, I think, also is a part of beauty because we've talked about that before, about how when you're very confident, it's a very attractive and appealing quality that makes you more attractive and more beautiful because that inner beauty comes out. And um, the last one that most of these men had in common was that they wanted somebody that wasn't wishy-washy, someone that was very decisive on what they wanted in life, on what they wanted to do. And if they asked her to go out to dinner, she didn't hem and haw and say, oh, well, wherever you want to go, she might say, oh, I would like to go here. So that, you know, instead of vacillating and bending to his will. So they wanted somebody to be very decisive about what they wanted in life too. Those were the five things that when I interviewed these men in their 50s, some of them were married, some of them were uh, divorced, and one of them was a bachelor. But these are the five things that I called out of all of their answers that they had in common. You know, I found this really very interesting because I realized I, you know, I don't know too much about men and how they think. And that's the honest to God's truth. All right. Now, I went to someone who is in their 70s. And again, number one is someone who has a good passion for life. Someone who has a great sense of humor, is, has gives interesting conversations, someone that you can talk to and share common ideals with. Someone also, and let's go back to the other groups, someone who is a good listener. They want someone that not only they, they can have a conversation with, but she doesn't hog the conversation, but she listens and is attentive and makes him feel important because whenever he's talking, she listens so that makes him feel like she really is interested in him as a person and that she really cares about him. And also, again, someone who is independent. Because when a man is 70 and he's looking for a partner, a mature partner, he wants someone who kind of can stand on her own two feet. Now, I'm not talking about these older guys who take these real young women. I'm talking about a man who has his feet on the ground, who knows who he is, and who appreciates the qualities in a mature woman. And that means that all of those things that I listed are really important to men in their 70s. So if you are a mature woman, don't feel that you are over the hill or that you are out of the loop. If you're divorced, if you're looking for a partner, if you're looking for to get married again, take this in, you know, into consideration. These are real men that I interviewed and these are qualities. And do you know what? Not one of these men said anything about they were looking for a, a young attractive trophy wife. None of them. So I think that is perhaps a man who is in a category all by himself. I honestly believe that. And all of you women out there who feel that you are invisible, don't believe it. All right, now let's get to the last group. And I uh, only interviewed about three of these men because they're not too many men that, you know, in their 80s that I know that are still looking for women, but they're out there, that's for sure. Uh, they, the consensus was that they liked a woman who had a natural beauty. In other words, someone who's not really highly made up, someone that has just a soft and a beautiful natural beauty. They also wanted someone who was self-confident, and that came up in a lot of the different 
categories that I interviewed. Someone who is uh, able to, you know, know what she wants and to believe in herself and to know that she looks good and doesn't worry about age because age is just a number. A woman that was self-confident. Also, again, here we go, ladies. <laughs> Someone with a sense of humor. So many times, you know, ex except for the teenager, um, all of these men really appreciate someone with a good sense of humor. And, and to me, that means someone who is, who doesn't take life too, too seriously, can laugh at herself and can enjoy life. Because happy people usually have a really good sense of humor. And um, the fourth one was somebody who really was interested in life. In other words, she would be willing to do things with him, to um, have the joie de vivre and the joy of life, and didn't feel that she was old and invisible, but someone who really was enjoying where she was right now and just enjoying life in general. You know, that's what I try to do every day, and that's what I'm trying to help you all do, is to really, no matter what is going on in your life, if you're a single woman or if you're married, try every day to find one positive thing and try to make that day as joyful as possible because that is very attractive. It'll keep you young, keeps you happy, and it's attractive to other people around you, whether they are men or women. And the last one and the only way could I explain it is someone who has a feet on the ground, someone who is grounded. I mean, they are in reality, they understand the situation, they um, have good, good values and that they are grounded. They know where they are, they know what they want to do and they don't have any fly-by-night ideas about life. But someone who is just like them, you know, just someone who was very grounded. I found this so interesting. I really did because I know that if I were a single woman and if I were, you know, if something happened to Arthur, I don't know whether I would ever want to be married again, but should I want to have a companion or something? I definitely would be thinking about character. I would be thinking about how kind he was, uh, how good he was to people around him, how, how intelligent that he was, and and someone who also was very grounded and knew uh, where he was going and who loved my children and grandchildren. That was really important to me. It's amazing. Not one of these men of course, the teenager is exempt from this, but not one of these men said that they would care whether or not she embraced their children if they had been married before or their grandchildren. Not one of them uh, said that. So I think the maternal side, we're a little bit more careful about who we bring into our lives, that they will not, that when they pick me, they also pick my family and my children. That's kind of very important to me. And I found that that was very strange that none of them really brought up that that would be a very attractive feature in a woman. If they wanted a companion, oh, they decided to get married again. So it really is true. We women are very different from men. Now, <laughs> here we go again. I want you to let me know whether or not you agree with what these men say and whether or not you agree with my perspective, the perspective of what we women like in men, we older women would look for in a man if we were looking for a partner today. Just put it in your comment below because I'm going to read them all and I really will be very interested to find out just what you think. But this also told me that older women, older men do not negate 
thinking about having a mature woman as a partner for them. Because what they also said, most of them also said that they wanted someone who could relate to their life experiences. In other words, someone who could relate to the type of music that he loves and listened to since he was a young man. Someone who could relate to his experiences in life in that same time frame. Because younger women, they don't have a clue about any of that. So for a man who is looking for more of an in-depth, honest relationship, and that's the only kind of man that you want to bring into your life, that is what they all had in common as well. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, next Tuesday, I'm gonna be putting up a great fashion video up in the garden, so I'll help you look forward to that. But in the meantime, please be good to yourself. Do something wonderful for yourself today. And as I said, you know, let someone know around you that you love them and you're thinking about them. And we want to pray for the world and share our love. Take care and I hope to see you in my next video. And thank you so much for being here and for subscribing and being in this community. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.